Hello. On most projects, time is tight, which means you don't always have the luxury of doing all the bells and whistles that a proper 3D app has. So here's the next best thing using Element 3D and an OBJ sequence. This example could be used on absolutely anything, but I needed a flag in this case, and it couldn't be easier. It's basically a 16 by nine flag. It's 16 by nine because that'll be important later. And there's just one simple planar mapped UV map, filling the full coordinates there. And that's basically all there is to this model. And here's that flag in layout, just with a few displacements on it. And it's this that I wanna take through into element. First step, let's set up the UV map correctly. So this is specifically for setting up an OBJ export with UV map. So here we are in the surface editor. Now this caused me a few headaches before. This is the correct way to set it up. We wanna be using the standard material and we want the UV map directly plugged into the texture of the color channel. So although I don't have an image here, I am pointing it to the UV projection and that flag UV map that I showed earlier. Don't, as I did originally, use an image node and set that up and plug that into the color like that, that won't work. And neither will using the color into the color input, that won't work either. It needs to be directly in the texture channel of the color input of the standard material. Good, so that's the first thing cleared up. <laughs> now we need to get this exported as an OBJ sequence. Now I'm surprised Lightwave doesn't have a native way of doing this, so we've got to go third party. Now if you have this excellent script called Shift Keys Plus by Ernest Chan, you'll have something bundled with it called Save Object Sequence. And that'll do exactly what we need. As a quick aside, for anybody who uses a lot of keyframes, this script is fantastic. But it does come at an affordable cost. Link is in the description, let's see how this works. We'll close that down and we'll go over to Utilities, Master Plugins. Now under here, if we type save, you should pop up in your little list here, save object sequence, so we'll click on that. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Select my export type here, so I just want selected in this case on an OBJ and I'm saving it to my desktop. First frame, last frame, go. And then off it goes and does its thing. So what about the free version of this? Well, unless somebody can tell me different in the comments, as far as I can tell, it's a round trip via Blender. So step one, let's pop over to the in out tab and we'll go to the Alembic export. I'm literally just gonna leave everything as default and save to the desktop. So that ran through the timeline and that's done that. So I'm in Blender, I've deleted the default cube. Okay, and then I'm going over to file and I'm gonna import that Alembic file. Okay, so there it is. Now you notice we don't actually see anything. It's because it's ginormous. So if we press scale, let's go 0.01. That'll scale it down to something slightly more reasonable. That all appears to be well. So now we're gonna do is export that to an OBJ. So we'll go to file, export, wave font, OBJ, there it is. Okay, again, I'm gonna put it on the desktop and I'm gonna tick this little animation button here, which is super handy. That'll give us our sequence, export OBJ. And that's all you have to do from the Blender side of things. Now it's time to get rigged in After Effects. Now, before we start, I've got a PBR texture set here for fabric, and I'm just gonna take the base color and the normal, just for this example. In fact, I'm gonna set the textures up first. Now, if you remember way back when I said flag needed to be at 16 by nine, so let's start there. Now let's take a base color, drag it into here. That's too big for what I need. We can obviously change this around later, but let's just move it up into position here and let's just go for the reptile, CC reptile. And we'll just drag it out to the right and down. And that's fine to get the ball rolling. So let's set up the flag. 
new comp, I'm going to call it flag one, create a new solid, let's call it E3D, let's quickly put a new camera in there as well, and apply element to our 3D element layer. Okay, so let's go back to our texture layer, which is the texture RGB. Let's move that in, move it to the bottom of the stack and turn it off. Under the E3D layer, go to custom layer, texture map layer one, we will point that to our texture. And in case we add some effects to it, we we'll might as well put it onto the effects and masks setting. Let's get the OBJ sequence in, scene setup. So under file, import, 3D sequence and we'll load up the OBJ sequence we've just exported. Okay, so load material and for force alignment, I want from model. There we go to that. Okay, there and there it is. So if we now scrub this frame offset, we can see it animating away. It's a little bit on the small side, so I'm going to normalize the scale here. So that's looking okay. We're on the default material here. So let's select that and under diffuse, we'll click on this little button and then we'll load up that RGB texture that we pointed it to earlier. And now because this is looking at the UV texturing coordinates, that should all marry up nicely. So basically we now have everything we need to set up our scene. So we can move this object around, particle look, we could scale it up. Or if we didn't want to do it that way, we could create a null and we'll do it do it interactively. And then of course we've got control of the camera, all in 3D space. While we're here, let's set up the normal map. We'll duplicate the texture RGB, let's call it norm. Good afternoon everybody. And then we'll swap out the base color for the normal map. Drag it in under custom layers. We'll point that again to the normal map. Scene select normal map. That can be as strong or as weak as you like. I'm going to knock the glossiness down as well. Let's add a light and off you go. So the nice thing is obviously you can go back into element and add stuff. So just as a uh, bit of a bonus feature, the reason I went this route is because the original job needed captions on this flag. So I'll show you how that was done using master properties. So if I go into this RGB texture, which I've just added a adjustment layer over the top. Let's just add some text. So I'm going to call it for simplicity's sake. Let's just call it caption, caption one. Let's scale that up so it's nice and big. Perhaps we'll turn the opacity down so we can see a bit of texture underneath. Okay, so that's quite simple and straightforward. So if we go back to our master layer, there is our caption in our flag. But to make this even more flexible, if I now go into our texture and we go into master properties or essential graphics as it's called here, if I take the source, if I take the source text and drag it into there, I can now go back into flag one and you see this master properties, I can now call that by way of editing value or as I tend to do it as a script, so quotes. And as you can see, that nicely updates my flag here. But on top of that is I can duplicate this comp. So it's now called flag two. I can go into this comp and using the same technique, I can change it to something else. Not only that is I can reposition this scene as it were to look different from the other scene. So now I have two scenes, both different, but both the same and saving me a ton of time. Thank you.